If looks can be deceiving, so can sounds. Welcome to Watch Mojo UK, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 Doctor Who actors who sound nothing like their characters. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're looking at actors from the Revival series who use different accents and voices for their roles. Some of the entries may surprise you when you hear their real voice, while others are just us appreciating how good their acting is when it comes to putting on an accent. Number 10, Peter Capaldi, Lobus Caecilius. Doctor Who is a great job, uh, but it's a, it's a bit of a, a television factory. When he took on the mantle of the 12th Doctor back in Series 8, people were quick to say Capaldi's native Glaswegian accent made him trickier to understand than his predecessors. But during his first Doctor Who appearance as Lobus Caecilius in the fires of Pompeii, he wasn't lucky enough to preserve his natural voice. You call it modern art? I call it a blooming great waste of space. But we're going up in the world, my love. Lucius Dextrous himself is coming to the house this afternoon. As the well-to-do Roman who buys the TARDIS as a modern art fixture, he's speaking in a clearly discernible English accent, though not one that can be pinned down to any particular place. The Latin accent must have been a bit too difficult to pull off. I get that contract for the marble granaries of Alexandria. We'll be rich, you'll see. Hold on there, Evelina. You are not going out wearing that. Number nine, Jenna Coleman, Victorian Clara. I think whenever you play anybody that's actually really lived, lived yeah, yeah, there's a certain kind of um, uh, responsibility, I suppose. While in her debut role as Oswin Oswald and her main role as Clara Oswald, Coleman kept her northern accent, being originally from Blackpool, as Clara's one-off Victorian echo, she had to alternate between two other styles, neither of which were her own. We may be used to hearing her speak the Queen's English today, thanks to her leading role in Victoria, but it was less familiar during The Snowmen. And how are the children? Excited about tomorrow? Amusingly, Victorian Clara is also doing a fake RP accent and is supposedly a cockney, at one point having to break character as the upper-class governess to sink into an East London dialect. What? Snow that can remember. That's silly. What's wrong with silly? Nothing, still talking to you, Anna. Number 8, Tosin Cole, Ryan Sinclair. There's still some really, really fascinating body parts in here that you could tell us about. Series 11's strong northern accents confounded even the most dedicated fans, but where Jodie Whittaker and Mandip Gill are both from West Yorkshire, Huddersfield and Leeds respectively, Tosin Cole is far from it. Ryan Sinclair may be a Sheffield native, but Cole is a Londoner and hasn't quite mastered the tricky Yorkshire dialect. Who would play you in a film about your life? Me. <laughs> Modest. Yeah, you know, I give myself a job, you know. <laughs> Though it would probably be a lot harder to notice if he wasn't alongside so many Northerners in the role. I mean, how can he not be here? She's his mum. She would have wanted him here. Then again, even our 13th Doctor had accent issues frequently getting notes to tone it down and speak more clearly. Walter? Tongue? Tongue! Smart boy, biology. Number seven, Peter Kay, Victor Kennedy. Do you know Akabelis? Like I don't like Akabelis unless it's got ice. Lots of planets have a north, including Klom, twin planet of <clears throat> Raxacorico Fallopatorius. But while the Absorbaloth reverted back to Peter Kay's trademark Lancastrian accent when he revealed his true green nature, when he was undercover as Victor Kennedy, his human disguise was completed with a fake southern accent. No, 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 I, I don't shake hands. Back, back. I suffer from a skin complaint. Eczema. Oh, you mean eczema? Oh, this is worse. Much worse. A blister to the touch. It wasn't entirely clear where Kennedy was supposed to be from, other than anywhere except the planet Klom, and it didn't do much for his cover since he was already so ludicrously suspicious and sinister. Duly noted, Ursula Blake, most likely to fight back. Regardless, this veteran comedian is still fun to watch. Number six, Andrew Garfield, Frank. But we're all stars, Stephen. Is the point we're all made? Well, to speaking of Neil deGrasse Tyson, we yes. are all made of stardust. 
After he left Blighty to make his name in Hollywood, it's easy to forget that Sony's Spider-Man is really a Brit. But he had to adopt American accents early when he took on the role of Frank in The Daleks in Manhattan 2 Parter. Frank is born and raised in Tennessee and comes to New York in search of work during the Great Depression, befriending Martha along the way. Look at the date these designs were issued today. They must change something last minute. You mean the Daleks changed something? Yeah, it could be. While Garfield doesn't quite blend in as an American as well as he does in his later roles, Frank is still a likeable and memorable character who thankfully escapes being turned into a pig slave. Oh, honey, you're burning up. What's wrong with you? Tell me. One man down, we ain't even started yet. Number five, Catherine Stewart, Jenny Flint. Madam Vesture will ask you questions. You will confine yourself to single word responses. One word only. Jenny Flint is often characterized by her cockney working class roots, but the accent doesn't come naturally to Catherine Stewart, who is Welsh in real life. So, Pamela, Anna, Nana, and Irina Lugva. But she's probably not also a Victorian maid and a martial arts expert, so who are we to judge? Fake accents or not, the Paternoster gang wasted no time in becoming fan favorites and are finally getting audio adventures of their own. This means Stuart will have to work overtime to keep the East London accent, but it has to be worth it to stay part of this iconic trio. Now, dear, which button controls the lights? Number four, Billy Piper, Rose Tyler. Is that it then? Dishing out chips? I could do A-levels. Unlike Rose Tyler, Billy Piper doesn't come from the mean streets of a London council estate. She's from Swindon and is one of the few Who actors who actually does speak with received pronunciation in reality. No, wait, oh. I, I, I wasn't asked, no. I think Matt Smith may have said in, you know, passing or in jest, you know, it would be nice. I think maybe he said that and then that kind of became something quite different. There are only a few brief scenes in New Earth where Rose, while possessed with the consciousness of the villainous skin sheet Cassandra, slips into Piper's less regional way of speaking. Otherwise, she never slips up. Oh my god, I'm a champ! But she is a highly decorated actress. So if we could tell she was putting it on, it would probably ruin the character. Number three, Joanna Page, Elizabeth I. Unfortunately for Joanna Page, Queen Elizabeth I was not and never could be Welsh, leaving her with no choice other than to do a posh accent. So, um, and things happen that you don't expect to happen to any of us, but no, it is funny as well. You won't turn in and want to sort of slit your wrists. <laughs> Luckily, she's a professional and was more than up to the task. And there isn't a trace of Swansea to be found in her royal performance. I am accustomed to taking precautions. These Zygon creatures never even considered that it was me who survived rather than their own commander. It's almost jarring to watch after Paige received so much acclaim for playing distinctly Welsh Stacey West in Gavin and Stacey. With episodes like The Day of the Doctor, she really showed her range as an actress. Your people need you. And I need you alive for our wedding day. <laughs> Number two, Neve McIntosh, Madame Vastra. How did you find him? <sighs> Stringy, but tasty all the same. I shan't be needing dinner. It's hard to say for sure what the Silurians sound like when they talk amongst themselves, but we can probably assume that Madame Vastra didn't emerge from the London underground speaking posh right away. And as it happens, it's not a normal way of speaking for the Scottish Neve McIntosh either. I'm Neve McIntosh and I'm playing Libby Quinn in mouthpiece. Originally from Edinburgh, McIntosh's upper-class cadence as Vastra is entirely artificial, but it probably lends her more authority during her day-to-day -day life as the world's greatest detective as she works to keep Scotland Yard under her thumb. She already has enough trouble being both a lizard and a woman in the 1800s. I resent your implication of impropriety. Number one, David Tennant, The Doctor. 
You'd be forgiven for thinking David Tennant was born and raised just outside of London. But this couldn't be further from the truth. Maybe it was because it was for the Glasgow Health Board. We probably weren't actually allowed. We were all <laughs> underage, so we probably weren't allowed to be smoking. And what a lovely choice of wall by the director. Beautifully, beautifully <laughs> short, isn't it? He was reportedly so good at the English accent, Russell T. Davis wrote in tricky lines to try and throw him off to no avail. I just thought... Since you saved my life and I've got a brand new sonic screwdriver, which needs road testing, you might fancy a trip. Perhaps the best example of his versatility is when he pretends to be a Scotsman to get on Queen Victoria's good side, and later has to pretend to break character and return to the more unfamiliar voice. Are we in Scotland? How can you be ignorant of that? Oh, I'm, I'm dazed and confused. While he returned to his Scottish accent for Broadchurch, it's impossible not to associate his English one with the nation's favourite doctor. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo UK and subscribe for more great content.